when that buzz gets home, I'm going to get even with him. Imagine working your ass off and expecting to get paid cash, and all I get is a fake bootleg bottle of whiskey. That dumb stoop buzz is one low-life crook cheating me, an honest, hard-working gnome. Portrait of an angry gnome. His name, Dick Olaf Lockett. Claiming to be honest and hardworking, Mr. F. Lockett, in reality, fails to see himself as others see him. A petty, self-indulgent scalawag. Tickle F. Lockett, at this moment in time, is at a crossroads and is about to enter the Twilight Zone. Tickle! Tickle F. Lockett! Who's that? Tickle Aloysius F. Lockett! Who's that? What? What was that? A beer can? Can you see me? Holy mackerel! A ghost! Ah! I'm not a ghost. Look closer and tell me what you see. Oh my god! You're me! Am I dead? What the hell is going on here? Let's just say I am what you should be, but alas, are not. What the hell does that mean? That's gobbledygook. Deco, call me your guardian angel, your voice within, or your better self, whichever suits you. Oh, balderdash, there is no one better than myself. Deco F. Lockett, you are a selfish, dishonest, egotistical, mean-spirited, creepy, Heartless, poor excuse for a gnome. Does this not describe you? Well, nobody's perfect. At least I'm not a Democrat. What? What's going on here? A pie? You got a spoon? You must heed my words so I can help you. Ow. Now clean yourself up and listen to me. Oh, crap. Boy. Do I ever need a drink? I'd like to welcome everybody to my new project. Mm -hmm. And here it is. This is a Auburn... Never even heard of it! ...radio. What do you mean you never heard of it? This is sort of a mystery. What are you talking about? I believe this is a early 30s maybe 33, 34, and I'm going to repair this for a fellow YouTuber. Wow! Now her name is Renee. She has a YouTube channel called Paper and Moose. Boy, that was a keen idea! And I like to call her Miss Moose, out of respect, because she's a cool lady. Now she's a collector of ephemera. Ephemera. That's uh, people who collect vintage paper, either printed or written. Old photographs, stuff like that. She's also a reseller. She sells at flea markets. And she picks up stuff in uh, thrift stores and auctions. And she found this, literally, in the trash. Oh, oh good Lord! Here's a clip from her channel. Let's take a look at it. It is trash bag reveal day and from the looks of it, it looks like we might have some radios and from the sound of it, perhaps some broken glass. So let's dig in and see what treasures I can salvage from an actual trash bag. So yes, another trash bag, everyone's favorite. If you are new and you are not caught up on the trash bag adventure, I have been taking bags from a home that is doing a clean out. Every trash day, they put out treasure for me that I load up in my car and I dig through on my channel. So be sure that you subscribe. This, this way you will always be up in the know on what trash bag I'm working on or what other adventure here is happening at the channel. So enough jibber jabber. Let's get in. I see some radio, oh, two radios it looks like, right on the top. Oh, look how pretty. It's an Auburn. 
not like that makes any difference to me because I have no idea what radios are good and what radios aren't, but how lovely. So this is the volume. Listen to that click. And then here is the tuner. Station selection. And then you have the back. Whew. I'm not plugging this bad boy in. <laughs> Look at that. The tubes are all in place. Everything is still there. Ready to find a new home and be brought back to life. So this radio would be in a landfill at this very moment, had it not been for uh, Miss Moose saving it. Whoa, we as they say in the comics. And after I seen her video, I contacted her and I told her I would love to uh, work on that radio and I know I could get it going for her. So she took me up on the offer and here it is in Oregon. So I'm gonna fix this with your guys' help. Maybe you can uh, send me some information on this uh, radio with this Auburn uh, label. I don't have a schematic for this, but uh, since when does that stop me, huh? Let's take a look at it here. Turn it around. Let's just turn it around here. There it is. It's even got tubes in it. Yep. Now looking at this, this looks like a, uh, a plug here for a battery. So this is probably an AC-DC set. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, five tubes. Yeah, you can count. This looks like a, an antenna coil here. This used a long wire antenna, which is what this is. Now all we need is some wire and a plug. So let me take the screws underneath off and we'll pull the chassis out and take a look at it. Oops. I forgot to take the knobs off. So, uh, what's going on? Keep these in a safe place. Now I can pull it out. Well, there it is. Let's turn it around. Oh yes, very nice. That old speaker there. Looks like it's a field coil speaker. Hopefully this will work. If not, we'll have to uh, find a good speaker for it. Here's the tuning capacitor. You've talked enough nonsense. Here's the tubes here. Oops. Looks like we got a broken tube up here. Looks like the uh, top broke off. You clumsy bonehead. And the tube has gone to air there. No problem, because I ordered a new set of tubes for this. What kind of tube is this? This is a 38 tube. How lucky can you get? There you can see it. Got a hole in it. It actually says 38 there, so this has got the tubes marked on the sockets. What's this one here? It's got an R there, so this is probably the rectifier. Arr. 25Z5. It says a 38, so it's got two 38 tubes. 38. Well, look at one of these. Look at that beautiful tube. These are the old globe tubes. Oh, it's just gorgeous. You can see the difference. These have like a shoulder on them, but these, these are old. I have my 1929 Philco that has, that uses these type of tubes. This is a 36 tube. Hopefully these, uh, these work. I like to use as many original tubes as possible. Oops, that just came off. But it doesn't look like it's broken, so maybe I can fix this. You suck more than I do. This one's a 39 tube, according to that. Can't really see anything on it. Speaker says Rolla. The Rolla Company, Cleveland, Ohio. 
Electrodynamic reproducer, it says. Look at the old uh, on-off switch here. See how big that is? Still feels pretty good. Oh my God! Hey, look at that. <laughs> Not much to it, is it? <laughs> Got some capacitors here. Maybe like a microcapacitor here. They probably got some capacitors in these boxes here. This probably won't take much to get going. Hopefully not. But knowing old Buzz, you know, hopefully I won't screw this up because it doesn't belong to me. There's a closer shot of it. Now this might be a, a choke. Because it looks like it's got the output transformer up here. It's got a coil here. You notice this has no, no IF cans. So this is one of those um, TRF radios. And we'll discuss that a little later. Now Miss Moose wanted to hear music coming from this radio. And hopefully by the end of this video, we can do that. Well, there's a close-up of one of those capacitor boxes. You can read it a little bit better there. Please, leave a contribution in the little box. It says dual 5 microfarad, 30 volts. Until further notice, I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, capacitor good. There's no obvious signs of burns or anything like that. Everything in there looks really, really good. You know, it's kind of a tacky way to do it, but since I don't have anything to really test it out. Something Radio Corporation. A-M-O-L-O. -O. I don't know. Let's take a look at that other capacitor box. Well, there's the other one. It says dual. Maybe that's eight microfarad, or it could be a five. But it's probably eight. And then it says under bottom there. Okay, there it says Mica Mold Radio Corp. So that's made by Mica Mold. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Let's see if we can test this. Uh, field coil on the uh, speaker. Now this says something about ohms here. And there's something written there. That looks like 2250. So let's measure that. Hopefully it's good. Okay, the wires from the field coil are over here. One goes here. And one goes here. Wow, that's measuring uh, 2,000 ohms, 2,059. So we got a good field coil, folks. Yay! That's half the battle. Let's see if we can test this uh, output transformer here. Now the wires are going down under here just like the uh, field coil. And I traced them down here. Let me put some clips on my meter. I think one will go here. Let me get another clip. Now, I don't know how much that's supposed to read. But we're going to find out here if it's any good. One ohm. Huh? <laughs> you big dummy. Is that right? Oh, there we go. 578 ohms. So that sounds about right. Of course, what do I know? It's true. Well, I think it's good. Let's go ahead and check this filter choke. Four hundred thirty-eight ohms. So that's good. This is looking pretty good here. Let's go ahead and check this coil here. Since this is the antenna coil up here, that's probably the RF coil. And there's only one of them in there. Let's 
56 ohms. So if those two are 56, let's go over here, check these two here. 4.4 ohms, 4.5. That's looking good. Whoa. Oh, brother. <laughs> Be careful, Buzz. Yeah, big off. Looks like there's a big heavy duty resistor there. Let's check that. Eight point five K. So I don't know what that's supposed to be, but uh, at least we're reading something on it. Some of you might remember my uh, 1932 Mystery Cathedral Radio. Nope. It was a TRF Radio 2 and it had a, uh, a blown up antenna coil. So let's just see if this is any good. Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, mm. <laughs> oh. Well, 7.4. I guess that's okay. Test these other two wires here. Stick to the basics. 35.2. I think we're ready to go here. Okay, let's go. You think we can power this thing up? Of course, I gotta get that tube. This looks in better shape than, uh, than it looks. I'm gonna take this outside and blow blow all this uh, dirt out of there okay i blew it out looking a lot better you know this chassis don't look half bad here i think that's gonna clean up pretty good who knows now i have a tube tester but my tube tester won't test these old tubes like this these like five and six pin tubes so you can test the continuity on them. This tube is the 36 tube, that globe one, that really nice looking tube. And so I've got the meter on the heater pins. So it's measuring 4.1 ohms, which tells us that's got continuity. It doesn't tell us if it's gonna work, but at least we know it's not uh, open funny thing about this tube like I said earlier I had some of these in my 1929 Philco and those were made by Cunningham this has got a CC on it I wonder if that stands for Cunningham Corporation or something like that I don't know but it's got stamp 3-20 that couldn't be 1920 could it I doubt it but it's all the markings I can read on it this one here is the uh, rectifier tube. What was that again? 25Z5. Let's check the heater pins on this one. That should be right here. I had to look these up on the internet. See where the pin hops were. Okay, that's reading about 14 ohms. So that's probably good. This tube is a Philco tube. You don't know if you can see that. Philco. Let me get some of the other ones and we'll test those. Okay, here's a 38 tube. And this one says RCA Cunningham Radiotron. Let's just see if we can find the uh, heater pins. 4.7 ohm, so that one's not dead. Here's the one where the top came off. I don't know if this can be salvaged. There's not much of a, uh, a wire. I just broke some of the glass. It just came off. It may be salvageable, I don't know. Let's see if we can test this one. This was a... Uh, 39 slash 44 tube 4.7 ohms I'm gonna see if I can fix that hopefully I can 
Well, here's the last one. This is the one where the glass broke off and it too went to air. Got no more vacuum in that baby. This is a Hytron tube. It's got a 5.3 or 3.5. 53 or 35. Your guess is as good as mine. This, just to see if this was any good before it bit the dust. Yeah, the heaters are still in there. So that measured okay. Too bad it got broke. You know, as soon as I get my uh, tubes in, we're gonna power this puppy up. Oh, how very thrilling. You excited, Miss Moose? Maybe we'll get this thing to play some music. Wouldn't that be great? I'm so excited. Now this radio has got five tubes. Four of them are 6.3 volts each. So that adds up to about uh, 25 volts. Plus the rectifier tube is 25 volts. So that means there's 50 volts that's needed to power this radio. So they came up with this resistance line cord. And that power cord actually has three connections. You got your two uh, AC, the hot and neutral. And the third one is a resistance wire. So the reason they call these curtain burners, because the power cord would actually get warm. And I don't know if it's true that it caused fires, putting the curtains on fire. I guess it's possible if uh, you had the cord underneath the carpet or something. I don't know. All I know is uh, this cord here has got to go. This has three wires on it. I ohmed it out and uh, it's got a break in there somewhere. But we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to replace it with a regular cord. And I'm going to have to get with Brendan. Well, hello. Our resident genius and mentor to all our YouTube uh, radio guys. I asked him to help me try to figure out how to reduce the 120 volts that we're getting now from the wall down to around 50, maybe 55 volts. So Brendan will come up with something, but we'll tackle that in part two. Okay, you're probably wondering, what the hell did he do here? Yes. Well, I want to power this up. And I was checking uh, the internal capacitors in this box here. Now there's two eight microfarad caps in here so one of them was shorted so I decided to uh, tack in a replacement here just temporarily and then while I was at it I decided well since one of these is bad the other one might be bad too although I didn't test bad I clipped these leads here and I stuck this other one on here so now these uh, this is an eight this is a 10. I didn't have two eights. Now these other two here are some type of bypass caps. Uh, you place these two. These are two fives here. I got my tubes in today. So this is the tube that was broken and went to air. So I put a new one here. I put a new one here. This is the one that the cap broke off. Although I'm going to try to fix this later. But for the testing purposes, I put a new one in here. Now, I can't go over 50 volts. Why not? Like we discussed earlier, all these tubes add up to 50 volts. So, I'm going to bring the Variac up real slow. Don't be scared. <laughs> I'm really nervous here. <clears throat> you are acting like a baby. Okay. I think we're ready. The radio's on. And since I'm hopeful, I've got the antenna hooked up to it. Calm down. Uh, let's see here. I think that's it. The Variac is hot. Your reputation is known far and wide. Let's put the box hot. Oh, good grief. Box is hot. It's a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done. Okay. 
when I turn this, you're going to see the AC going into it. And this is the amps that it's going to draw. Now I've went over this a million times, but I like to explain this before I do it. If this thing starts to spike, then this power is going off fast. Since we're only going to crank this up to 50 volts, I'm going to start off very slow. Very slow. Buzz, please don't screw this thing up. Okay, here we go. Buzz, if you mess up my radio, I'll come over and mess you up. Uh-oh. Already seen that move a little bit. That makes me very nervous. But it did go down. Ah, we got 1.2 volts. That's AC on the one of the tube filaments. These are all in series, so if this is 1.3, the others will be 1.3. But the rectifier is a 25 volt tube. But I don't have another meter to check that. We'll just go by this. Let's bring it up a little bit more. Okay. We got two volts going into the radio. It's drawing a little bit of current here. I'm so nervous. I'm sweating like a pig. Let's try a little bit more. That went up and went down again. That's good. I have no idea how much B plus we're going to get. Looks like we got some activity there. Oh boy. Is this going to work? That's slowly coming up. Look at that. We got 1.3 volts and going up. This is utterly fantastic. It's still going up. At only 2.6 volts. Whoa, what happened? Uh-oh. I think my battery is ready to go on this thing. Okay, let's see if we can bring this up to three volts on the filament tubes. This is our DC up to 10 volts here. Oh, Miss Moose, are you excited? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm excited already. Everything's looking good here. I was worried about that. But that looks pretty normal. Fifteen point one. Let's go up to four volts. Keep an eye out here too. Okay, we got four volts here. This went up a little bit. Did you hear anything? I don't believe this. Holy smoke. You got something coming out of the speaker there. Let me touch the grid cap on the uh, audio tube here. Be careful. We're only getting 27 volts DC here. Since this is stable, I'm gonna go up to five volts over here. Remember these are 6.3 volt tubes here. So we don't want to go past that. Looks like that's still going up.
4.5. We're looking good here. There's a trice truck outside. Trying to spoil my video here. We'll go up to five volts here. Keep an eye on there too. Thirty-six volts DC. Go up to 5.5. You can tell when I'm putting that higher, the speaker got louder. Now, I, the tuner is down over here. I think I'm going to have to flip this around so I can tune it. I wonder if I can do that without blowing it up. Maybe. But I doubt it. Dare I do that? Don't do it! I'm warning you, do not do it! Let me try it. Be careful, Ralphie! Hey, 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 be careful! Be careful! Looks like we got about 35 volts AC going into the, uh, the radio. Come on, cooperate with me. All right, let me see if I can tune this. Here's the volume control. Ah, volume control is working. Oh. Look at that. Oh, wow! It's a lie, man! Sounds pretty good! Let me tune it some more, see if we can get any other, let me see if we can get any other stations. I think this is a one station wonder. Oh, another one. Two station wonder. Got another one. Whoa. Back and forth about exactly what the tone should be and that it should never be um, partisan. It should never be um, attempting to espouse any... That station must be my uh, closest station there. 1360, I believe. Uh, and what it's like to live under it. So sort of like an... an uh, that's, that's the Russian station. Well, what is that, six stations? Incredible. I gotta go potty. 
I go pee. <laughs> then do it. Let me do that. We'll come back and maybe play some music on this thing. Oh boy, what a great day. It's 10 o'clock. Do you know what your brain is? Okay, I'm back. Now I made a little change here. I put this meter on the AC, on the rectifier tube. Remember, it's a 25 volt tube. So it's running about 23 volts. This is still the B plus. 43 volts DC. We have the AC going into the radio. About uh, 42 volts around there. This is reading about a little over 250 milliamps. So maybe close to 300 milliamps. Which I believe is probably okay. You know something? I could have gone the rest of my life without knowing that. So let's go ahead and play some music here. How about a little 1933 Bing Crosby, huh? Oh, goody. Why not, huh? Eh? Something very strange and mystic happened to me. Something realistic and as weird as can be. Something that I feared somehow is now endeared to me. What a funny feeling, odd and yet so true. Did a thing like this ever happen to you? Did you ever see a dream walking? Don't sound too bad. Success! Success! We've done it! Well, I would consider this a success. What about you? This is a real treasure. I'm glad I got it going for Miss Moose. I'm so proud of you. You gotta be proud. I'm proud of you. After all these years, it's playing music again. This could have been in the trash, but it was saved. In part two, I'm going to work with Brendan to come up with a modification so this will run off the 120 line instead of the 50 volts using the Variac. Fantastic. Good night everybody. See you next time. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, here's Peanut looking for more treats. You know, we think Peanut is part Italian because she loves spaghetti. Let's feed her some spaghetti. It's kind of funny how she eats it. Want some spaghetti? Can't wait, can you? Italiano? So gone. And on it grew meatballs. And the tomatoes.
I gotta clean you up. Come here. Your face is all dirty. Come here. So you don't like to clean up. Well, there you go, folks. Peanut, the spaghetti-eating dog. Say goodbye, Peanut.